Well, you guys got another video. This is what's wrong with Windows 11. First of all, Windows 10 support ended in October 14th, 2025. This sent everyone into a panic who had really old computers because then Microsoft started to tighten the screw on what people could do with their old computer. They were trying to force people to update to a new PC but a lot of people started using Windows 10 IoT Enterprise LTSE versions because the support was for 2032. And the reason for that was because of the strict system requirements from Microsoft, who basically killed off millions of computers. This didn't allow them to have a free upgrade to Windows 11. And this was because of the strict uh, system requirements that Microsoft had in place, like supported CPUs and also TPM 2.0 and other things that you had to have to be able to use Windows 11. So people started to use Windows 11 as unsupported hardware. They realized that when they tried to install Windows 11, they were getting error codes, just like you see right here. This process isn't currently supported for Windows 11. This machine was going to be perfectly fine for Windows 11, i5, 7200U is a perfectly capable CPU in 2025. But in Microsoft's eyes, they didn't want to support all of the old hardware. So it didn't make the cut. Then people were making videos on how to install Windows 11 on really old hardware and showing that it was working perfectly fine. And then Microsoft did another thing, which was called pop count, which means that the PC's processor doesn't support a critical feature called SSE 4.2. If it didn't support that, you couldn't install Windows 11 on it. So that reduced the amount of people that could use Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. This means that a lot of these PCs are gonna end up in landfill. And basically, some of these PCs were still serviceable in 2025. And Microsoft's big plan was to force people into buying new computers. And unfortunately, some people just don't have the money and they wanted to continue to use that old computer in 2025. And for some people, their computer was perfectly fine. It did everything they wanted it to do and they just didn't want to send it to landfill and throw it away just because Microsoft are forcing them not to use Windows 11. So people were sticking around with Windows 10 using IoT LTSC versions and even some people jumped ship to Linux. And this, of course, avoided the big landfill problem that was going to happen if Microsoft had their own way. Then come the shenanigans with the sign-in options for Windows 11. Microsoft were tightening down the screw and forcing people to watch the out-of-box experience, which is this screen right here, to make you sign in to a Microsoft account. And a lot of people don't want a Microsoft account. They wanted to use a local account but Microsoft continued to block all of the bypass methods that people were coming up with to be able to sign into a local account during the out-of-box experience process. Then come along programs like Explorer Patcher and other programs to customize Windows to the way they wanted it because a lot of this was taken away in Windows 11. OpenShell and programs like Start 11, Start All Back, these programs allowed you to customize Windows to change that hideous start menu that is in Windows 11. And programs like these become very popular to replace the hideous new start menu that Microsoft have started to roll out to Windows 11. Then we had the big bombshell of recall. This caused major concern around the world and it caused that much concern, Microsoft pulled the plug. Basically, recall was designed for Copilot Plus PCs but it didn't go away from the fact that it was storing information, screenshots of all of the activity that you did on your computer, which obviously sent major shockwaves around the world. People just didn't want something on their computer that had the ability to take snapshots of what they were doing on their PC. There were some concerns about it even snapshotting bank details and other things like that. So then Microsoft pulled the plug on recall and did some more work on it and then reintroduced it once the dust had settled. Things started getting really bad for Windows 11 at this stage. People were fed up with the amount of data that was being collected, the telemetry that was built into Windows 11, Copilot, 
was introduced, which was also AI, just embedded in just about every application that Microsoft had on their system. This is when people started to want to de-bloat Windows to remove all of this bloatware from Windows 11. So they started to create scripts and batch files and applications that would do all of that to remove all of the unnecessary bloat that Microsoft introduced into the actual Windows operating system. This was unwanted applications. It was settings with adverts, forced adverts, telemetry, and other nasty stuff that people just didn't want. Now, tweaking applications is nothing new to Windows, but Windows 11 has seen a rise in typical scripts like this one, which is a Windows debloat script. Obviously, it comes without any guarantees, and there's also a little warning to say use at your own risk. And what these scripts do is basically run in the background and remove a lot of the bloat from Windows. It will uninstall all of the applications that you don't need. And of course, it will turn off a lot of settings that were to do with telemetry and harvesting of your data. And so the Windows D bloat script was born. There was tons of them starting to appear all over the internet. And these videos become very popular. People wanted to de-bloat their operating system, turn off all the telemetry and all the privacy concerns. And of course, some of these scripts were really aggressive. Some of them were removing key components from the operating system, like Windows Defender, Microsoft Edge, and other key components. And sometimes this broke the operating system. And of course, these scripts come with a disclaimer saying you run this at your own risk. And no one was willing to give you technical support with all your problems. So they would turn up on Discord servers like mine saying, my Windows update doesn't work or something's happening with my system. Can you help me? I run a script and I can't remember which one I run and it's made changes and now it's not doing certain things that I want it to do. Then people starting to get a bit more professional, a bit more creative with their scripts and started to create things like Atlas and websites and basically, these made bold claims, like they could give you major FPS improvements, performance boosts, and remove all the telemetry and all this sort of stuff. And of course, a lot of this is simply not true. Your computer will not run any faster by running scripts on your PC. You will save a few useless megabytes removing some applications, and you might have a feel for the PC running a bit faster if you're running a really old computer that has a little bit of memory and a really old CPU. Putting Windows 11 on it, which it was never designed for, would run a little bit smoother in a sense of turning off a lot of this stuff. So this is where a lot of these scripts come into play. And of course, they preyed on the words performance, FPS, boost, and all this sort of stuff. And of course, this conned a lot of people into using them. And a lot of people broke their systems and had to keep reinstalling their operating system. One of the big problem with scripts is you can't really see what it's actually doing on the back end. So a lot of these scripts were designed for what that person might have wanted to remove. And of course, uh, then you would run it and it would then just remove it from the PC. So along come programs like oh no, Shut Up 10. And this was obviously designed for Windows 10. Then they made it available with the plus plus sign and it made it available for Windows 11. And this was a much more easier and useful program where you could just toggle on and toggle off features that you didn't want, like Copilot, Recall, and other nasty stuff that was embedded into Windows 11. It protected your privacy by turning off as much as it could by disabling a lot of the geolocation service and things like that. But these can all be done very simply in group policy. And of course, Chris Titus Tech brought out a tool that made it a bit more easy. His first tool that he brought out was a script, and then he started integrating some of these rocker buttons where you could toggle them on, toggle them off to make it a bit more easier and revert back. And of course, but like I've said before, when you're running these, you've got to know what you're doing. A lot of people don't know how to read code and understand what it's doing on the back end. They just take it for granted and run it. And of course, it might remove something that they don't want it to remove. And this is where you have problems. Now, running any sort of script off the internet uh, is risky. And of course, you need to understand what's inside it. If it's open source and you can see all the code, 
you'd need to understand what that code is and what it's doing. And I'm not suggesting that any of these are doing malicious stuff in the background, but again, you just never know. And this is the risk with running scripts off the internet. Same thing with applications that aren't registered. If you download an executable file and run it on your PC and it's doing stuff in the background and you don't know, then you, there's a risk. And the same thing with ISO files, which we've talked about before. This is when Tiny11 started to show its face and then lots of other people started to create ISO files uh, to rip out key components. I even made videos showing you how to do it yourself, which is what I would recommend people do rather than download one off the internet. That way, you know exactly what you're doing and what you're taking out yourself. Of course, you'd need to know that the program you're using to do that would be safe, and that's also another risk. Now, these scripts are still being created, like Winhance, that's still being uh, developed today, and it will do because of the way Windows 11 is. It's just so full of bloat. There's so much telemetry in there, and people want to turn it all off. And there's a few good ones that are still being updated on a regular basis. This is one of them as well. And it makes life a lot easier for some people. But again, it does come with its own risks. So always do your research and always back up your data. Understand what you're getting into when you're running something like this on your PC. And it can break things. And these scripts don't come with any warranty. You are running them at your own risk. And that's always been the risk element of running things like these on your PC. Now, I just want to point out that we have talked about this before, which is Group Policy Editor. It will basically make policy changes to your PC. And this is all these scripts are doing. They're just adding registry edits to the registry to turn off a lot of features. And basically, that's all you can do here. If you have a backup of all of your policies, once you've set it all up, you can back these up, copy them onto your PC and put them into the correct directory where your group policies are, and you're good to go. Now, of course, you will need to have a Windows 10 or Windows 11 Pro and above operating system to use Group Policy Editor, but this can be easily upgraded from Home to Pro with a cheap Windows key from CD Key Sales that I promote on this channel. So you can use those uh, to basically uh, upgrade from Home Editions, and this will give you full access to Group Policy Editor. This way, you're having full control of what you're turning off on your PC. And these are designed by Microsoft. So basically, you're not going to be relying on someone else's choices on what should be turned off and turned on on your PC by using a script, whereas you can do it yourself, save those uh, policies, and then paste them into your folders right here, reboot your PC, and all of those changes will be set in place. If you need to run a batch file or a script, you can create your own little batch file that does certain little settings, and it's simple. It really is. I've shown you videos on how to do that. It's pretty straightforward, and all you need to do is, you can see right here, just going to quickly make the screen the right size here as it's changed it for some reason. And once we change this back, all of the policies that you've got set in place will basically turn a lot of these features off. The dark theme is just a dark theme. You can just turn that on in Windows. And of course, there's a few little bits that you might have to go through and just take care of. But all of your policies inside privacy and security to turn off all of the telemetry as best as you can. You can see all of this has been set up now. Uh, to off and it won't go back on even after windows updates it will be off and this is probably your best way of going about doing it this way you can see it's off and this can be reversed it's not set in stone you can go back into the group policy editor and change this whenever you feel like it all of these settings down here are all turned off as you can see and it's uninstalled all of the copilot and you can even do uh, uninstall Edge and use another browser if you want to, if you live in uh, the EU. Now, a thing to remember is running all of this stuff and changing all of these settings, even in group policy, it's going to just lighten the load a little bit on the operating system and turn off a lot of the telemetry and data harvesting that Microsoft do. But there's going to be code embedded deep into the operating system that you're not going to be able to turn off, which is still going to 
harvest information and you're using an operating system that is a closed operating system. It's not open source. And that is basically it. You're not going to be able to control exactly everything you want inside an operating system like uh, Windows 11. It's that simple. All you can do is do the best you can and uninstall what you can and turn off what you don't need. And that's about as best as it's going to get. You can change your start menu if you wish with, say, Start 11. That's what I use on my system. And that is what's wrong with Windows 11. There is tons of things wrong with Windows 11. And unless Microsoft start to try to rectify some of these problems, then people are going to start to stay on Windows 10. That's why Windows 10 has such a big percentage of users still, because they are not jumping ship to Windows 11. And some of them can't. They have no choice because they have an older computer. So that's my take on what's wrong with Windows 11. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. My name is Ben Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. Whether you're tier one, tier two or tier three support, I really do appreciate it. And I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.